This is a Motorola black and white. This is one of those deep desert laying face down in the mud out in the wind and sun and rain for 20 years. Uh, abandoned sets. And uh, I'm going to check the CRT on it. I got a lot of these things I need to assess before I start resurrecting them. It's, it's got a big crack right here. Plastic's all sun-baked and brittle and discolored. get her open and uh, see what she looks like. It's always inspirational when it has three different types of screws holding it together and the majority of them are pan head wood screws and then it's even more inspirational when it looks like this on the inside. We actually have weeds growing out of the chassis. Let me get it upright. Now regardless if there are weeds growing out of the chassis, that's something that can be dealt with. What we, what I've kind of learned on these desert, deep desert resurrection sets, uh, there's a couple things that, that fail here um, due to the abuse, which is one of them is the yoke. So we want to look at this and it does look a little bit green and discolored of course typically it's not this winding that shorts out it's the one in the back which is the horizontal um, no clue of the condition of that so I want to check the CRT the first thing I want to do is clean this off and give it a visual inspection to see how blue the rear uh, the rear part of the gun is where the cathode is series string metal chassis built with solder pots kind of like a zenith Motorola really did its own thing um, 7HG8 in the tuner as opposed to a, a GH8 yeah Motorola was good stuff you can see this has got a lot of Sylvania horizontal output, GE damper, Sylvania vertical output, GE whatever that one is. Sylvania there. We got a original Motorola tube here. So it's looking like a pretty high hour set. Look at how this thing right here, which is what grounds the DAG, look at how rusty that is. Of course, this is unreadable. I wonder if this is a chassis number here. GTS or something TS. 586A01 So taking a look in here, there's a little discoloration there um, right at the very back tip it's a little brown, but it's not blue and over here it is a 19CHP4 California Highway Patrol. So we'll have to check that out. Alright, here we go. Filament set. Well, it looks like at least it's, it's lighting up in there. I guess it hasn't gone to air. Put that at 6.3. Emissions. 
put that on black and white, crank that up. And I'll pause the camera and I'll let this sit for a while. It's not looking too good. It's interesting that there's actually some cutoff with the emissions that week. I'll let it sit for five minutes. All of a sudden, it just popped and it started going and, and it's doing this again, this jiggling thing. And I've seen so many of these that were sitting for that long do this. I mean, look at this. This one's actually testing up above my mark of a brand new CRT. Well, that's not right. Look at the gun balances all the way up. But it's not showing shorts. So let's, let's set the cut off. Okay, we're on B. Right, let me um, let me take the filament down and see what happens. Make sure this isn't some kind of short inside. I'll just turn the filament off. Bring the filament back up. I know this test kind of weird. This test kind of too good to be true. I mean, what what I'm seeing here, the picture of all these tubes being changed, and the discoloration there. What I'm seeing here, it it doesn't. It doesn't quite match up and it's not a replacement CRT because it's got the original Motorola label on it. I still dig these weeds growing out of here. Hell with it, let's power it up and see what it does. I figured I would open this flyback cage up for inspection and the um, high voltage rectifier tube is broken. So that's going to be a, oh, we got, we got weeds growing out of the high voltage socket here. See that? We have weeds growing out of the high voltage socket. Maybe I better drop the chassis out of this and have a look underneath it. Okay, another mud filled spider sack egg saturated rust machine and this is built this is built a lot like a zenith where it's got solder pots and point to point construction um, Motorola did their own thing though they, they, they were their own unique designs and they're kind of uh, difficult to troubleshoot. Look at this, the horizontal output tube is made in Holland. Well, I, I'll fire it up with the, uh, and we'll just see what happens with the tube. I'll just pull it out. Okay, check this thing out. This thing just keeps getting better. We have a dead spider inside the high voltage rectifier tube. Can we see that there? I 
We have a dead spider inside the high voltage rectifier. Um, yeah, I don't see why we can't fire it up. I'll just leave this off and we'll just do a quick startup. It's not going to produce a picture without any high voltage. What is this thing? 3CY3. Probably some probably some random special tube that only Motorola used in this this specific set. Look at this, 27 GB5 and 16A. They're all weird tubes. It's Motorola. It's their own thing. Here we got four minutes left on the camera. We're going to just plug it in here. It's not worth my time to variac it. If it expires on, on set here, that's even better. You know, just a note, uh, if I was picking up a TV like this and I didn't have a way to test the CRT before I bought it, I wouldn't pay more than five dollars for it um, or free because one of these, a, a TV with a bad picture tube now is not worth anybody's time because it's more trouble to try and find one than it is uh, anything else. So if you're looking at getting into this, uh, you pick one of these up pick up a TV and you don't have a way to check the CRT, you should really double think it. What the hell? So this is, oh, this is the volume control. Oh, that's vertical. Duh. I don't know why I was thinking this was a channel selector because it has numbers on it like that. I mean, you would just think that this is VHF and that's UHF. But that was when I looked at it back here and I saw that the volume, the pot was on there with the switch. Like I said, it's Motorola. They're, they're weird. Um, this is a good candidate. I bet this thing will work if I had that. Maybe I'll try and find one. I got a minute left on the camera. Okay, we'll get it going in part two. I put a new tube in there. Okay, continuing on with the Motorola. Uh, spider set. I forget exactly where we left off with this, but I was gonna release the previous part and then I decided, well, what I'll do is I'll just tack this We'll try and get it working in the second part here. So I, I vaguely remember that in the previous part, the um, tube was cracked. And I did find a schematic on this based something on this number. I forgot exactly what it was. It was a couple weeks ago. 
but it turned out that they had the wrong tube in here and this was actually supposed to be a 3A3. So I've got a 3A3 in there now and I'm, I find I'm always getting these comments, you know, take it and pressure wash it or take it to garden hose to it. And after working on three or four of the three or four, five, maybe even more of these deep desert sets that have been sitting outside and finding the pattern problems, one of the big pattern problems is the, the coils. You know, this wire is coated with varnish here, and when that varnish breaks down, they arc out. I'm not going to steam clean this thing or pressure wash it or anything and I'm not going to do that with any of these. The dirt might make you squirm but it's not affecting the operation of the TV in my opinion. Uh, if I get it working what I might end up doing is just taking a vacuum and maybe a brush and cleaning some of this stuff out or some light compressed air but as far as water goes no way. That's only going to stir stuff up and strip off what little insulation might have been there in some place and cause it to arc out. So if it's working, I don't care about the dirt. It's These things are designed to run with some level of dirt. You got to keep in mind that when these things were being sold, everybody smoked. Every Almost everybody was smoking. So they are designed to handle a certain amount of dirt. So let's plug it in and see where it was. Okay, in the previous video I could swear that the vertical oscillator was looping, meaning it was starting and stopping. Um, that video was a couple weeks ago, but I, I can actually see static here, snow. See if I can adjust that to kind of sync this up. And it looks like as it warms up, the, there was vertical fold over down here. Now it's it's expanding down, which would kind of indicate a weak vertical tube. And the, the the spacing is horrible up here. You can practically stick your finger between the retrace, the lines there. It's working now. I have no idea. Definitely got some weird issues because look at it shrunk down now and it's like it's continuing to shrink as it goes. There we go. Watch when I adjust the brightness. There we go. Now it's now it's I know it's blanking out here, but it's basically starting over. That to me Now that could be a capacitor that's leaky or that could be the tube because it, it, it got worse as it ran. So probably the first thing I would want to do is change the tube which is probably some weird tube that I don't have.
Alright, here's the Sam's. And even though this is like a console, consolette, doesn't matter. Um, same basic chassis for 1964. So we've got, let's see, we've got our vertical multi vibrator output, which is a 15 CW5. And we've got our vertical multi vibrator, which is a 9A8 triode. And we got the sink separator, which is a 9A8 triode. Um, PL84, that's interesting. Isn't that like a uh, European type number? And they use a 15 CW5 for the audio output too. So I guess what I could do is I could pull the audio output and switch it with the uh, the um, vertical output and see if that fixes it. But it could be the 9A8 too. This is kind of symptomatic of a gassy tube where they they work fine for 10 or 15 minutes and then they start to wig out. Could also be a capacitor that gets leaky those old domino postage stamp ones do that. But first thing to do is to try and change the tubes around and see if we can get this thing to work. Alright, so here's 15 CW5. That's a genuine Sylvania. 15 CW5, that's a genuine Sylvania too. So let me see if I can get these out without breaking them. Okay, the brightness is way down. You can just barely see that. I switched the tubes around, and that's what I got. Let me try and finger it here a little bit and see if it pops in. Uh, nothing. And nothing. Nothing. Um, huh, well that doesn't make much sense. The audio is obviously working. This is our vertical output tube right here. One thing I notice is that this is not getting very hot. Um, which I almost wonder if the vertical output transformer is open because if this has plate voltage and it's not running it should be getting hot 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 to where it would burn me so I'm going to do a few voltage checks and I'm going to check pin 7 which says do not measure on the um, Thing, that's the plate and I want to see if there's any voltage there first of all now I wouldn't do that with the uh, thing working properly that's for sure in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to let them cool down for a minute and then I'll come back and I'll clip on here and I'll measure that voltage before I before it warms up okay I'm on pin 9 here which is the plate on the schematic. This is the one that says do not measure. And the reason why it says that is because when that thing is working properly, the high voltage pulses on that will blow the meter up. So what I'm going to do, thing's been cooling off for about 15 minutes. We know it's not running, but just to be precautious. I'm going to turn the power on and I'm going to see I should have voltage there right away. And I sure, surely do. 170 volts. Let's get this off of here. We have our line, so it's not running, so we can probably safely take a look. 
We have 146 volts. Get that off of there. I don't know why the tube is not getting hot. Now we should have 135 volts on the screen, which is pin 9. I guess if that was missing, it would cause all these problems. Pin 9, come on. We got 147, we should have 135. Pin 3 is a cathode, it should be grounded. Which it is. And pin 1 and 2 are the grid, they should be negative. Wow, negative 29 volts. No wonder why it's not getting hot. How could that thing possibly be biased off that hard? Supposed to be negative 10 volts. We got a 1 meg. It goes down to the vertical linearity. And then we got a capacitor that goes over to the plate of the 9A8, which has got 50 volts, so that capacitor is definitely not leaky. How could it be biased that negative unless this one meg is open or something? And I just found the problem. It's this pot. You can hear it start running there, and it drops to negative 14. It's just dirty pots. I'm chasing dirty pots right now. Well, after screwing with those pots in the back for a good 20 minutes and them do literally just disintegrating from being sunbaked, you can see here's some of the blue, uh, what was what you used to turn it with. Uh, I got it to this point. Come on, sink, you stupid thing. But they are so far gone, and you can see the way that's bouncing around. That's like a noisy volume control. Those pots are just completely shot. Completely shot. It looks like the horizontal is stretched. Horizontal width is way too much, too. It's like just. And the speaker's done. Listen to it. Golden Voice has had too much to drink. It's done. Let me see if I could adjust this a little bit, but I, I just think those pots are just completely shot. Eh. WD-40. Just kind of... I don't want to waste my good uh, stuff on this thing. Well, this actually looks okay. We've got a bad speaker. Okay, we know that. Uh, if I was really interested in this uh, thing, I would replace these two controls here, or these three controls. These are what have been causing all the vertical problems, these three pots right here. So, uh, let me see if I can get this hooked up to some sort of actual TV signal. And we'll look at a picture on it. It's kind of dirty to take in the house. And I, I guess I could vacuum it. But I really, really, as touchy as those controls are, as touchy as this whole thing is, I don't even want to take these weeds out of it. You. Your day is filled with family, work, friends. Our day is filled with covering the news that affects them all. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The news that matters to you depend on us. Southern California's only 24-hour news and traffic station. KNX 1070 News Radio. <laughs>
I want to take a quick second and show how I align this type of audio detector. This is the same type that RCA uses. So we have our have our IF transformer here. You just pretty much want to peak that for maximum volume. This is the one here that's critical to adjust the buzzing and distortion. So I'll show you how I align this. The first thing you want to do is locate it. So A8. So we locate A8 on here and it's pointing to this guy right here. You can see that red thing there. That is a an adjustment tool down the alignment tool down into A8. And you'll notice that some of the clips have uh, buzzing and some of them have a lot less. It's just how I arrange them to get my anti-smoking propaganda message through. So I'll show you how I adjust this. Okay, by the way, we got a, a new speaker. Really what I think. Or a good speaker bridged in there. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to let it warm up for a while. You know, a good hour. Okay, then you... I'm using Direct TV, but you could do this with a set-top box or anything. So what you're going to do is you're just going to take it and put it in the menu so you get the digital text. So here, on a set-top box, it's the same thing. Speak of the devil and the devil appears. Some business, Katie. Oh, really? Uh, this? Oh, you don't have to worry. She knows all about it. Now you can hear some buzzing started there. Okay, now the next thing is a, adjust the fine tuning to where you want it. you had to rush here before signing. Bill, do I have to sign this today? I don't even have a chance to think about it. Provide some stability for our son. So we want it right there nice and sharp. Generosity. Okay, now I'm going to tweak the coil. Listen to the audio. It help a lot. Who is it? How did you find me? Persistence. Same thing that helped you make your way to my dad's bed. Does he know you're here? Clearly not. We'll discuss our, um, women. Never ends well. Okay, so you can hear that's probably about the best I can get it. Not woman anymore. If I ever was or did. Steffi, leave that part out. I haven't talked to Steffi. She's on her way home now. Clearly she talked to someone. Well, that's what we do. We Come on. We're family. We don't sneak around mm. wearing mustaches. Uh, yeah, well. Clearly there are things that your father has kept private. Now with this type of detector, it's really hard, almost impossible to get rid of all of the buzz. These type of detectors are just buzzomatic detectors, Zenith RCA. They're just going to buzz with the digital text. There's just nothing you can do. You just get it as best as you can get it and deal with it. This is CNN Breaking News. All that coming up, but we're also following breaking news at Trump Tower in New York City, where a climber is scaling the building right now. Donald Trump is not there. He's out on the campaign trail tonight, but the building is the home of his campaign headquarters. Police and emergency crews, they are on the scene, but it's not clear who the man is or why he is doing this. Trump, uh, his surrogates and his supporters are scrambling, meanwhile, tonight to tamp down the latest controversy ignited by the Republican presidential candidate. CNN has learned that the Secret Service has now had multiple conversations with the Trump campaign about a comment many took as a threat against Hillary Clinton. Trump just sent out a tweet denying any talks with the Secret Service. He maintains that his remark saying, quote, Second Amendment people can stop Clinton it was a call for voter turnout. Hillary Clinton's campaign, meanwhile, is also facing tough questions tonight following a newly released batch of emails from her time as Secretary of State. They're raising new questions about the relationship between the Clinton Foundation and the State Department during her tenure. We're learning new details. Go out there and kind of, you know, push him in. Uh, well, that's just not how, how they operate. And you see how close they are. They're almost within... So know, he's like got a harness on here. And try to, to get him in there. Uh, look at that hook. You can see that hook. It, it looks like they're trying to grab him with the hook, and he's resisting. Well, maybe not. He's still moving, but 
Uh, he's got limited options right now, this individual named Steve. Uh, Bryn Gingras is on the sidewalk below uh, Trump Tower, 5th Avenue, uh, near 57th Street in New York. Bryn, what are you seeing from your vantage point? What are you hearing? Well, we are a little bit further back now, and uh, we are now seeing him get a little bit closer to that 21st floor wolf where police um, hostage negotiation teams continue to talk to him uh, again identified as oh they're gonna try and hook him here and, uh, <laughs> they're gonna try and get the carabiner around his harness that's not a good idea because even if he falls a few feet could EOL out between Madison and Fifth Avenue here in New York so He's getting closer uh, Brent, hold to on police. for one you moment. Tell, Brent, uh, Shimon, Shimon is getting more information. What else are you learning, Shimon? So, so I just wanted to share something that a source just told me about how they're gonna. What they're doing now, basically, they're continuing to talk to him. Uh, they're continuing to sort of negotiate with him, asking him what he wants, uh, asking him like, "Do you want to come in? What What is your plan?" And he's really not telling them much, uh, except that he really wants to go to the top of the building. So as you can see, WCBS. What the. They're not grabbing him right now. The other thing I want to share with you is that they have a, uh, they took a photo of him. Uh, they have a pretty excellent photo. Here we go. So now it seems like the police have, well, at least they were trying to grab him. They're now asking him to sort of move to the right. Uh, but this is how they operate. This is what they do uh, in these kinds of situations. Uh, certainly during when, when they're dealing with people who are suicidal and are on bridges or on sort of buildings. But here we go. Looks like, here we go. Him right now. Looks like they're grabbing him. Well, let's just watch. Wow. Well, there you go. All right. He's inside. Yeah. All right. It's so now, over. So, this guy yeah. is inside. You heard the crowd cheer. Uh, there was a big gas, obviously, as the police grabbed him. Uh, and they brought him inside. Uh, this is the 21st floor of the uh, Trump Tower. It's been going on for about two hours. This individual uh, from Virginia named Steve, he announced on a, a YouTube video yesterday he was going to do this. He did it uh, seeking publicity, presumably. We have no idea if he had Well, you should have there. something but there to cut the rope. There on the scene, Bryn Gingrass, he, she's just below Trump Tower. Uh, what's the mood down there? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Well, as you said, well, the, the crowd cheered really when fight. they called him in and sort of gasped even a little bit, making sure that he actually got inside of that window. And now there's a number of police officers pushing the crowd away from this area. Obviously, now uh, this has become a clear, somewhat cleared situation as far as the crowds are concerned. Uh, their attention no longer on that window. That could death and see they're not a cheater. I've never I'll be back on the Maury show. I beg Here we go. To give me a second chance. And thank God she took me back. Once again, she accuses me of cheating non-stop. When I get in the door, Latoya checks my whole body for evidence of me cheating. Latoya, this time, you got it all wrong. I am not cheating on you again. Who would dare cheat on something with those beautiful earrings? They're like they're like Christmas ornaments or something you see hanging off the rearview mirror of a car. Came home at 3 a.m. 3.30 actually. Did you have sexual intercourse with another woman? You said no. The lie detector determined you're telling the truth. Look at those. Let's let's get in on those earrings. Mm, Latoya. Your ass is the red stain 
stains on the clean linen. Uh-oh. Oh, hello. A lot of neighbors and a lot of friends are having kids these days, so... App or SSI benefits may qualify for home internet at a discounted rate of $10 a month. No commitment, deposit, or installation fee. Visit That's an interesting problem. All doing our part to give you service that you can rely on. Make the smart switch today. So when it went to an all-white screen, the horizontal oscillator started to twerk or squirculate or something. Needs an alignment. Sound is way off. Boy, if that's what they call a happy ending these days, I think it's time to move to a different country. Are you a man who feels it's your right to control your wife or girlfriend? Hell yes! Call the Maury Show at 1-888-45-MAURI. That's 1-888-45-MAURI. Explore Ellen's amazing culinary scene at Los Angeles. Back, we're going to put it all together in a gorgeous warm potato salad. Caramelized onions. Ooh, caramelized onions. I bet those go good with those earrings. All right. Needs a speaker. Uh, as it warms up, it's dr it's pulling down over here, so that's okay. Um, the pots are bad, but it's stable right now. It's actually not bad. It's a lot better than it looks in the camera. You get this kind of Morier uh, thing in the the camera because the camera's shooting at um, uh, twelve. Was it twelve eighty by seven twenty at sixty frames a second? So it's it's a little bit. But yeah, maybe we could. Um, take the weeds out of it. Let's get a shot here of the glowing. Kind of always like to get that shot in there. That's kind of cool. Interstout was spotted. That is not a little twister. Look at that. That's all coming up today on KKL 9 Music. Now to check the markets and your money. The stock market will close in just a few moments. Let's go ahead and take a live look at the big board and the Dow Jones and see where we are right now. And the Dow is up earlier. It was down just a little bit up right now, about four points at 18,534. A smart mom found a way to make Wi-Fi really work for her family. She used it to get her kids to do their chores. She left a note for her kids that said, today's Wi-Fi password can be unlocked by texting a photo of a clean kitchen to mom. Brilliant. That's Brilliant. Right. Isn't it smart? <laughs> she told her kids the picture had to include a box of crackers on the counter so that she knew they weren't faking it and that it was from that day. The creative mom finished her note with a popular phrase from the Hunger Games, may the odds be ever in your favor. 